The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All-Hit Radio! Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back to the X-Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to give us a call, our toll-free number is one 877 That's toll-free throughout the U.S., Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii at one 877 Our email address is xzone at talkstarradio.com. On MSN Messenger, talkstarradio at hotmail.com. And you can watch, listen, and chat at www.xzonetv.com and our main website, is xzoneradio.com. Starting on Monday, June the 2nd at 10 a.m. until 2 p.m., The Sounds of the X. It's our music show that will be four hours live every day from our studios here in Hamilton, and you'll be able to listen to it and watch it at xzonetv.com. It features new age artists, the music that we play on uh, the show, up-and-coming artists from around the world. It's going to be a venue for people in the music industry to uh, to get out there, and it's going to be filled with trivia, facts, contests, as well as some great musical guest interviews. And I'd like to thank Mike Woods, uh, who is uh, helping us uh, launch this, uh, this, uh, this very unique uh, broadcast. And Mike is uh, acting as our music director right now. So, Mike, if you're listening, thanks, pal, for all your help. It is uh, May the 20th in the year 2008. It's my mother's birthday, so, Mom, if you're listening, happy birthday. And on this date in 1892, George Sampson patented the clothes dryer. Yeah, like if clothes didn't need to be dried until then, right? Okay, thanks, George. In 1926, uh, Thomas Edison boldly predicted that Americans would always like silent movies better than talking pictures. Uh, Apparently, the light bulb never went on. Uh, Today is the uh, birthday of uh, Ron Reagan, the president's son, who turns 50. Now, he was a ballet dancer, and uh, he danced uh, from the side of the Republicans right over to the Democrats. Cher is 62 years old today. Well, some of her is. Others are 14 years, 10 years, and 5 years old today. Things you should know, WKRP uh, co-star Lonnie Anderson married Bob Flick, a founding member of the 1960s folk group. The Brothers Four on Saturday. And just when you think you've heard it all, psychic medium James Von Prague, who created Ghost Whisper, who I can't stand, uh, both Ghost Whisper and uh, James Von Prague, claims in his new book, Ghosts Among Us, that people are surrounded by ghosts every day, and he sees two low level ghosts attached to Britney Spears. One has tattoos all over him, and the other is kind of creepy looking. James, I thought you had to be dead before your ghost hung on to anyone. Sad shoppers will have to pay up to 300% more than customers who are content. Psychological, and this is uh, by Psychological Science. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 
44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere, or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. Hi, this is Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout, here on the X-Zone Broadcast Network. I would like to invite all of our listeners to the second annual Parity Conference, January 27th through the 29th in Felsmere, Florida. We have some exciting speakers, including Brian Kano from The Haunted Collector, author Andrea Perrin, whose book inspired the hit movie The Conjuring, and our own Rob McConnell. There are events for the public as well as opportunities for paranormal teams to come together to share information. We also have opportunities for our guests to participate in some investigations of Felsmere's most haunted locations. Check out my website at www.paranormalstakeout.com or www.paranormalfbi.com for times and details. Hope to see you there. Welcome back to the x everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the shores of Lake Ontario, right in between Toronto and Niagara Falls, smack dab in the middle of the Great Lakes Triangle. My special guest this hour is uh, Jim Kepke, and uh, Jim was there, I guess, the first hour, and he's uh, graciously accepted an invitation to stay with us until the bottom of the hour when William Federer will be joining us. Uh Jim, before we went to the news at the top of the hour, we were talking about um, your book, My North Korea Vacation. Now, where is Obama, uh, not Obama, I'm sorry, uh, Osama bin Laden fit into the grand scheme of things when you're talking about government conspiracies, cover-ups, you know, pushing power where power doesn't want to be pushed? Well, you know, this is probably the the best possible way to wrap up our conversation tonight about government corruption and waste of tax dollars. Here's what happened. Uh, A little while back, I was reading a newspaper article about the CIA Mm -hmm. um, defending the billions of dollars that it has spent each year since 2001 looking for Osama bin Laden. And they defended that billions of dollars they've spent because they're leaving no stone unturned. The result of those billions of dollars is, as we know, nothing. They have no idea where bin Laden is, apparently, and they have not been able to find him. So I said, okay. I went downstairs to where I keep my computer, Mm -hmm. logged on, and looked up the email addresses for several mosques in Pakistan. 
in the areas of Pakistan where uh, bin Laden is believed to be in hiding. Very honestly, sent simple email messages to these Islamic mosques stating that I think bin Laden is a blight on the Islam religion mm -hmm. and that I would appreciate any help they could possibly uh, give me in trying to locate where he is. Seems like a crazy thing to do. Well, it seems I, like a very direct thing to do. Well, it is, and, and that's, that's, that's my way, for better or worse. Um, I immediately received, as might be expected, uh, some emails stating that they wanted to kill me. Okay, I expected that. That's why I don't tell people where I live. I but get I that received, feeling sometimes. Yes, I received one email um, from a gentleman who believed uh, the same way I do, that uh, Bin Laden is a, a blight on Islam, that he's using Islam for his own interest, that he's not the religious leader he pretends to be. And this gentleman, is he grew up in this area of Pakistan, very familiar with it, mm -hmm. uh, apparently has spent much, if not his whole life there. And he says that he is very well aware of the different um, trails or hiking trails that al-Qaeda uses in Pakistan. Now, while he does not know where bin Laden is, he knows the trails that al-Qaeda uses to go and to contact bin Laden and that other members of al-Qaeda use. Now, this, wow, this is amazing. So, I mean, this is a, a quite a stunning bit of information. And he did not ask me for anything. He just he wants to get rid of bin Laden, wants to get him out of Pakistan. So I said, well, I'm going to talk to some people in the government, and we may be getting back to you. And he seemed to be okay with that. Is it so, possible that uh, this person was uh, had an ulterior motive for for contacting you and uh, starting correspondence with you? Is it possible that it was actually uh, the U.S. government who was trying to see if you were actually a, a an agent for the Al Qaeda? Well, you know that's that's possible, but um, given that you know the the email addresses that I was using. Um, they, they seem pretty legitimate. Mm -hmm. I, I tried to check them out as best I could, of course. Jim, I'd just like to stop you for a moment here. We sure. just received a breaking news alert from CNN. Okay. Senator Barack Obama will win Oregon's Democratic primary, and this is according to a CNN projection. So once again, uh, from the CNN uh, okay. newsroom, Senator Barack Obama will win Oregon's Democratic primary. Jim, I'm sorry for interrupting you. Sure, no, no problem. Uh, so what I did was to contact... Well, my least favorite place in the world, the Central Intelligence Agency, sent them a letter saying, I have somebody who I think can be of tremendous help in locating bin Laden because of his familiarity with Pakistan and his belief that he knows the, uh, the paths or the, the hiking trails that al-Qaeda is using. Right. Um, let me know, and we'll work something out so um, you can contact him and talk to him. That was about six weeks ago. Absolutely no contact from the CIA. I've, I've sent them several letters now. I've sent them emails. Mm -hmm. I've tried to get a hold of them any which way I can. Um, and they seem to have absolutely zero interest in um, this information I have, which I think could be um, very important information. Well, it's certainly, if it is credible, it, they should investigate it. How, how can you not if... You're leaving any stone unturned, and the thing is, I, I got this much information mm. without spending spending billions of dollars. You know, uh, Jim, I, when it comes to Osama bin Laden, it boggles my mind that with all the technology that the U.S. government and intelligence agencies have, that they are unable to find him. I think they know exactly where he is, but they can't afford to bring him in because he is the key factor when it comes into the 9-11 uh, conspiracy theories. If they bring him in and he can prove that Al-Qaeda had nothing whatsoever to do with the downing of the Twin Towers and the uh, acts of so-called ter external terrorism on September the 11th, it would overthrow the government sure. in, in a way that we have never seen a government being overthrown before in in, uh, in a democratic society. That's true. That's true. And, again, I, I don't know what the motive is of the mm -hmm. CIA, but it just seems unbelievable to me that um, they would not want to follow up with this gentleman. 
And again, I ask myself, why? What is going on here? You know, who's in charge? Mm-hmm. What are they really? You know, what do they really want to accomplish there? It, it does make somebody wonder. One eight seven seven five two eight eight two five five. Exo Nation is toll free. Jim Kopke's our special guest. His website www.jimbooks.net. So, what is the next project that Jim Kopke is undertaking? Well, you know, I'm going to continue to uh, work away. There, there's some other stuff going on with uh, my research into uh, Al Qaeda, and you know, maybe I'm just not smart enough to know when I should should stop. But uh, that's kind of where I'm heading right now. And uh, between that and the Kennedy investigation, and I work work full time. I yeah. uh, I have my hands pretty full at night. What do you do with the government, Jim? Uh, right now, I'm a project manager, which involves um, working with budgets, uh, trying to get different, uh, you know, depending on what the politicians want done at any given time, trying to implement different projects. And uh, I, I'm actually trying to give the taxpayer their their dollars worth. <laughs> so, How, which, which is always a struggle. That you know, giving the taxpayer their money's worth is 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 always a problem. Why is it a problem? I thought it would be simple for the government to work in, in such a, a manner that the citizen would be happy, yeah, right, and, and that the politicians would be happy. Well, you're right. It, it should be, but it's not. And again, uh, much of the problem comes from on top. Um, mm-hmm. I'll give you an example. Sure. Uh, some years ago when I was working with a, a government agency, I found that there was a, a program that we contracted for that wasn't making the grade, and I pulled the people into my office and I said, we're not going to be able to renew your contract. And uh, Huge cost savings to the organization I was with. Uh, about two hours later, I received a call from the uh, electoral official who ran my department, and he said, nope, nope, I don't care if those people don't do anything. Um, I have connections with them, and you're going to continue to fund them. What do you do? Well, let's see. What did? Uh, well, what would I do? Yeah. Well, I would say too bad. This project or, or these people don't cut it. They don't make the grade. There's no need for them. And I would, in my gutsy mannerism, and maybe this is why I'm not in politics or employed by the government, is too bad. I'm I'm a public servant and I'm serving the public. Mm-hmm. I I think we, you should run for office, Rob. Are you kidding? My wife my wife suggested that and I said I'd be dead before I even uh, paid the nomination fee. <laughs> Honesty and politics don't go hand in hand, my friend. That's true. That's true. We found that out. Yeah, and and you know it's you know, I, I feel sorry for the youth of today because they're growing up into a into a political arena that is like a three-ring circus, sure. you know. And man, we're uh, we're leaving them in one hell of a mess. Quickly, Jim, uh, is it possible? Now, I, I don't know what your what your thoughts are on UFOs or UFO crashes or aliens, but would it be possible for the government of the United States to suppress the events of an actual UFO crash, UFO? Uh, landing and uh, the retrieval of alien bodies. In your experience, with if and this is just your own opinion. Just your own opinion, Jim. If such a thing happened, I think it would be absolutely a guarantee that the government would try to do that because um, they're always afraid mm-hmm. to share things with with the population because they don't want the population telling them what to do with this stuff. They want to be able to control that, and you can only do that if you suppress the truth. If you keep everything secret. But all right, if that's if that's the truth, Jim, then why did the government let it out that Bill Clinton had his affair with Monica Lewinsky? I think that I think they blew that one right by them. You know, they're they're not a hundred. Oh, there's a play on words if I ever heard it. Yeah, I enjoyed that actually. <laughs> but it, with with the Kennedy assassination, once in a while somebody uh-huh. comes out and said, I have information, you know, I know something, mm-hmm. and that person winds up dead. And so that's, you know, that's how these things are usually dealt with. But uh, most people realize that they need to keep their mouth shut. Well, obviously Monica didn't. 
All right, you and I have to say so long for now, Jim. Thanks very much for joining us tonight. Great pleasure talking to you. Keep us in touch, and it's always great having you here on the show. Jim Kopke, www.jimbooks.com. When we come back, William Federer will be joining us right here on the Exxon on the Talkstar Radio Network. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. And welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. And this portion of the Exxon is being brought to you by Answers from Your Angels with Amethyst Wildfire. Her website is www.answersfromyourangels.com. And from Adita Wegman, who is the author of Nostradamus Dream Interpretations Guide, Real Dreams Predicting Your Tomorrow, Well, The Power of the Stars, How to Use Them, and How They Move Us Humans. Visit her website at www.nostradamusdreams.com. William Federer is our very special guest this hour. And, uh, Exxon, would you believe me that if I told you that only 1.6% of the nation are atheists, yet their beliefs are becoming the law of the land? Well, here to tell us more about this interesting statistic with what he always brings to the table is undeniable truth is our good friend William J. Federer. Hey, William, how are you? Rob, great to be with you, and I apologize for my voice. No, nope. doing a lot of speaking recently, but um, no need to, my friend, and uh, congratulations to your son. Oh, thanks. He gra- graduated from high school tonight, and um, uh, going to be heading off to college. He's uh, the youngest of our four, so um, anyway, uh, it's, it's sort of a one of those changing type times which yeah. we haven't quite totally grasped yet. But we're uh, looking forward to um, seeing what all the the future for him. Well, I'm sure that you and uh, the missus are very proud, and rightfully so. Well, thank you, Rob. Tyranny of the atheist minority. 1% of the population, or 1.6, and they're causing all these problems? Well, it is interesting, this being graduation season, that mm-hmm. it's almost every year there's lawsuits where yeah. somebody gets offended that some a student or teacher mentions God at a graduation ceremony or at a football game, mm-hmm. or, uh, you know, Every Christmas we hear uh, people getting offended at Christmas carols or Christmas trees or menorahs or yeah. stars or, or David or crosses. And, and then, of course, cases that go all the way to the Supreme Court regarding Ten Commandments or mm-hmm. somebody's offended that a teacher may hint that there's a creator, you know, in, in the classroom. And uh, there's even cases where the Boy Scouts, uh, because their oath says, do my duty to God and my country, that they've been kicked off of public property. And, and uh, so that's pretty sick. With all this stuff going on, yeah. uh, just this past February, the USA Today had a front-page article on um, the U.S. Religious Landscape Survey. And this was conducted by the Pew Research Center. And, of course, it's available online at the, the Pew Research Center's website. Um, but it's interesting, the results. 
uh, that uh, only 1.6% of the people in America identify mm-hmm. themselves as atheists. Um, breaks down to about 51.3% identify themselves as evangelical or mainline Protestants, uh, 23.9% Catholic, 1.6% Orthodox or other Christian, 1.7% Mormon, uh, 1.7% Jewish. Of course, you add all those up, that's about 80.2% of Americans claim some Judeo-Christian type of belief. Um, the other percentages are uh, 12.9% said nothing in particular or did not choose to respond. Um, um, they think some of those might be immigrants from other countries that don't like to identify what they believe on a telephone survey because they don't know when it might be used against them later. Um, oh, they've got a point there. Uh, 1.2% uh, are Unitarian, Universalist, uh, Spiritual, New Age, or Native. Uh, 0.7% Buddhist, 0.6% Muslim, 0.4% Hindu. 0.3% other world religions, about 2.4% agnostic, and again, the 1.6% atheist. But again, this is the USA Today uh, putting out these poll numbers, and when you examine them, then it's just sort of somebody that studies uh, American history like I do and realizes that the goal of the government was to have the people have their say and not have the the, the, the king of King George the third be the one to um, uh, decide what was going to happen in the colonies and so there's all these founders that wrote all these different um, articles and writings throughout American history mm-hmm. where they talked about the people being their own rulers uh, like Lincoln's Gettysburg address November 19th 1863 Lincoln said that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom that government of the people by the people and for the people shall not perish from the earth then you ask yourself, okay, well, what do, what do the people believe? Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, uh, the Harris poll uh, says that 90% of Americans believe in God. Um, the Newsweek poll said uh, 91%, 91% of Americans believe in God, and the Fox News poll said 92% of Americans believe in God. And so you look at these different polls, and the vast majority of "Quote unquote," the people yes. do believe in uh, a deity, a creator. Um, may not all agree on who he is and so mm-hmm. forth, but we agree that uh, there's a higher power up there somewhere. But um, when you see the laws being changed to accommodate the 1.6 percent, um, then it almost looks like we're switching away from a form of government where the laws reflect the views of the majority of the people into a form of government where the laws reflect the views of a minority of the people, which is what the country rebelled from England from at the beginning when um, uh, one of the quotes from Franklin Roosevelt, and uh, interrupt me at any time, um, but uh, Franklin Roosevelt was running for uh, his re-election mm-hmm. uh, in 1936. So we have a Democrat uh, you know, primary campaign going on. Well, in 1936, Franklin D. Roosevelt accepted the Democrat Party's renomination for president. And he gave a speech, and in his speech he said, In 1776, we sought freedom from the tyranny That's right. of a political autocracy from the 18th century royalists who held special privileges from the crown. It was to perpetuate their privilege that they governed without the consent of the governed. That's an interesting statement there that that these royalists governed without the consent of the governed Mm -hmm. that they denied the right of free assembly the free speech and they restricted the worship of god so here's franklin d roosevelt in his democrat party renomination speech talking about uh, a minority at the time of the founding Uh, of course they were all church of england uh, the the king was that they restricted the worship of god of the other different denominations And, um, and so today we see the restricting of the worship of god um, by the will of the minority. And so it's just an interesting study when you look at um, you know, dem- the democracy versus uh, a, a tyranny type of government. It, is, it seems that we, we've done a complete circle. Well, it, it does. and um, One was political, and this one is, is religious. Yeah, um, uh, it's interesting. Some of the other quotes, uh, Alexander Hamilton mm-hmm. uh, said, The will of the people makes the essential principle of government. 
Uh, Jefferson wrote in 1816, try every provision of our Constitution and see if it hangs directly on the will of the people. And um, uh, But then it's interesting, uh, during the civil, right prior to the Civil War, we had a Supreme Court which made a bad decision. It was the Dred Scott case of 1857. And it starts off, I don't know if you've ever read it, but... It starts off saying all men are created equal, and it, so it sounds like it's going to go pretty good. But by the time you yeah. get done reading it, it says that slaves are so far inferior they should be enslaved for their own benefit. Exactly, and nobody, re, you know, like it's it's a great beginning, but the end sucks. And uh, and so Lincoln, in his inaugural address, candidly refers to this Dred Scott decision. Lincoln said this: the candid citizen must confess that if the policy of the government upon vital questions affecting the whole people mm-hmm. is to be is to be irrevocably fixed by the decisions of the Supreme Court the instant they are made, the people will have ceased to be their own rulers. And so that's what we're seeing happen in America, but uh, where the people are no longer their own rulers, where you can have the majority of the country, the majority of a state votes a certain way, and then some unelected federal judges decide that they know better than the people. And so we're transitioning away from the will of the people. Uh, yeah, are, are we really transitioning away, or are we enforcing the will of the people? And the will of the people, as it was uh, meant to be interpreted, is now being interpreted for the masses that are coming into this country, and uh, into the United States and Canada, and our laws that were meant to protect us are actually working against us. Well, um, that's, that's a good uh, uh, understanding there, Rob. Um, uh, I love Ronald Reagan quotes, and here's a, Ronald Reagan said in 1984, he said, Sometimes I can't help but feel the First Amendment is being turned on its head. Ah, exactly. The First Amendment of the Constitution was not written to protect the people from religion, that amendment was written to protect religion from government tyranny. Mm-hmm. And uh, another quote from Reagan in 1983, he said, The First Amendment has been twisted to the point that freedom of religion is in danger of becoming freedom from religion. Yeah. And um, uh, I, in my article that I wrote for World Net Daily, I, I put lots of these different quotes. Um, one of them was, was sort of interesting. Um, he says uh, in 1982, he said, in the last two decades, we've experienced an onslaught of such twisted logic that if Alice were visiting America, she might think she'd <laughs> never left Wonderland. <laughs> he said, we're told that it somehow violates the rights of others to permit students in school who desire to pray to do so. Clearly, this infringes on the freedom of those who choose to pray. To prevent those who believe in God from expressing their faith is an outrage. And, uh, anyway, that was Ronald Reagan um, one other one I like is a 1982 radio address. Reagan said, The Constitution was never meant to prevent people from praying. Its declared purpose was to protect their freedom to pray. That's right. Well, you, you see now, once again, the uh, as, as the as the president said, uh, the Constitution was never meant to prevent people from praying. It was declared, its declared purpose was to protect their freedom to pray. And... It seems that by protecting the freedom to pray, we have actually put ourselves behind the eight ball because they are using the First Amendment against us, not as it was meant to do to protect us. Yeah, it, it's an interesting uh, evolution. I, um, I put together a book called The Original Thirteen, mm-hmm. where I read through every charter of every colony. Oh, my Lord, how long and, did uh, that take? <laughs> it took a while. And then I read through every state constitution for the original 13 states, and then every amendment to those constitutions up to the present. Mm -hmm. So you get a snapshot picture from Virginia in 1606 up until 2006, and you get Massachusetts and Connecticut and and, uh, New France up there in Canada, and and, um, all the the different um, charters for these colonies all mention faith, all mention God, most of them mention Christianity. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, And then the problem was, though, each colony had its own preferred denomination. So whereas uh, New France was Catholic, um, we had Virginia was Anglican, and it was established Anglican, and establishment meant three things. Everybody in Virginia had to be a member of the Anglican Church. If not, you were a dissenter or a nonconformist, and you were uh, different uh, 
leaders would persecute you to a different degrees, but um, the church, official church, was uh, was Anglican, and everybody had to pay taxes to support the Anglican Church, and you couldn't know public office unless you were an Anglican, mm-hmm. and it was established that way up until 1786 after the Revolution, and then Massachusetts was established Puritan, and they chased out the the Quakers and the Baptists, and, and uh, then uh, Rhode Island was founded by the Baptists, uh, Connecticut and New Hampshire were founded by Congregationalists. New York was originally Dutch. It was New Amsterdam, and it was founded by the Dutch Reformed. And they chased out Lutherans and Quakers. And then Delaware and New Jersey were founded by Swedish Lutherans. Gustav Adolphus, the king of Sweden, sent out his explorers to found New Sweden. Um, unfortunately, it was taken over by the Dutch after a few years, and then that was taken over by the British after a few years. And uh, But Pennsylvania was founded by Quakers. Maryland was founded by Catholics. And Georgia was founded by plain Protestants. Their original charter in 1732 said, and all persons except papists shall have a free exercise of their religion. So papists, that means papal, that's Catholic. So in Georgia, everybody except, matter of fact, in um, uh, the colonial era, Mm -hmm. um, the British attacked uh, Canada and New France, and a whole lot of the Acadians fled and fled down the rivers, and uh, that's where um, uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne wrote the uh, the famous um, Evangeline story. Anyway, but they, they came down the rivers, down the Mississippi, and they wanted to go into Georgia, but they were only allowed to stay the winter because the people in Georgia said it was a Protestant colony. So the next year they fled to Louisiana, which was French territory, and um, these Acadians from Canada the term ended up being pronounced Cajun. So your Louisiana Cajun, you know, yeah. is, uh, is really the, the, the Catholic Canadians that had to flee when the British took over up there. Stand so by, my friend. You and I have to take history. a commercial break. William J. Fetter is our special guest. His website, www.americanminute.com. William and I will continue on the other side of this news, uh, this uh, commercial break, right here on the Talkstar Radio Network in the X Zone. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation. Whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials, how we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world.
Welcome back, everyone. Uh, William J. Federer is our special guest. www.americanminute.com. Some of the things that are ticking off uh, the atheists are they're offended by prayers at graduation and football games. They're offended by a cross or a star of David. They're offended by Christmas carols or patriotic hymns. They're offended by Christmas trees and menorahs. They're offended by the Ten Commandments or under God in the Pledge of Allegiance. Offended, a teacher might hint there may be a creator. Offended, by offended, a soldier said, God bless you at a funeral. Offended, the Boy Scout Oath says, do my duty to God and my country, or offended by a cross on a veteran's memorial. Pretty sad, I'll tell you that. Uh, you know, like when I think of uh, what happened, when was it, last Christmas, when this big, not this Christmas that passed, but the Christmas before that, with all the Christmas tree problems and menorahs that we were having, that's just plain stupid. Uh, Bill, well, you know... So where do we take it from here? What what can we do? Well, I think, uh, again, the idea is it's not the religious right against the liberal left. It's a democracy versus a tyranny. And it only makes sense that the laws of a country should reflect the beliefs of the people within that country. All right, but when you're looking at the United States and Canada and other countries, we are multicultural. We are multireligious. Uh, countries, isn't it just live, wouldn't it just be better to live and let live? Uh, definitely, but that in itself is a belief. And where did that particular belief come from? Uh, it didn't originate with fundamental Islam, because in fundamental Islam they don't believe in that. If you try to go over to Saudi Arabia and say, oh, well, I want to believe in some other religion, uh, you, you know, actually in Egypt it's a crime to change religions. You cannot even change if you wanted to. Um, so the idea of just letting people be free to live as you want, that in itself is the result of uh, a development of thought that took place in America, not in other countries. And what I do in my my work is uh, trace the origins of that. And it's, it is fascinating. Um, mm -hmm. In the colonial era, you had each of these colonies have their own particular religious flavor, you know, it was a different denom The attitude back then was, uh, fine, you don't like our Puritan faith, go start your own colony. And so then Roger Williams works. fled and he founded, you know, Rhode Island. And uh, Thomas Hooker fled and founded Connecticut. And, um, and so the idea uh, was when the war with England took place, with the Revolutionary War, um, these different colonies had to learn to work together to fight the king. After the revolution, they said, look, we don't really believe the same thing, but you were willing to fight and die for my freedom. I need to let you practice yours. And so that's where the idea of tolerance originated in America. And um, in 1776, 98% of the country was Protestant. Uh, a little less than 2% was Catholic, and about one-tenth of 1% was Jewish. And um, uh, then in the early 1800s, when there was a Irish potato famine and millions of Irish Catholics came to America and the Catholic percentage went up to about 20% in a decade. Hey Bill, I hate to do this but we've just run out of time for tonight. We're going to have to get you back on later on this week or the beginning of next week to finish this because I, I just could not believe all the information that you sent us and I do want to share it with the Exxon Nation. William Federer, thanks very much for joining us and once again congratulations to your son and your family. My name's Rob McConnell. When we come back from the news at the top of the hour... Harry Marvet is going to be joining us. We're going to be talking about Raiders of the Lost Ark, the new movie.